Piskat Zev, a neighborhood in disputed East Jerusalem. Here is shot. Two, 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 two. Three shots. A warm, sunny October day, and two Palestinian school children, cousins Hassan and Ahmed, casually stroll down a street. In this CCTV footage, they suddenly reappear, brandishing knives and chasing an Israeli man. Their first victim escapes. A few minutes later, the camera captures the boys again, and this time their targets are two Israeli schoolchildren, brothers Naor and Olev. <laughs> CCTV images from the shop confirm the little boy's account. You see him here in a green t-shirt just behind his elder brother as he gets on his bike. Then moments later, at the top of the screen, you can just make out the stabbing. As now all falls, his younger brother is threatened too. You see him suddenly run away. I was at home. And then I hear Ofek, one of my children. Mama, mama, come on, come, 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 come. And then I saw. And then I saw Naor on the floor. And non conscious. And I called him now, now, just open the eyes. Just hear me, just open the eyes. This man who runs a kebab shop next door saw the whole thing and gave chase to the young attackers. His father Khaled, grieving, still talks about his son in the present tense. This is how Hassan's life ended, half naked shot dead and splayed out on a track. Hassan grew up just a few minutes walk from the Israeli boy he's accused of trying to kill. What could bring his young son and his cousin to go and get involved in such a thing in, in the next door neighborhood? <laughs> اهتماماته كانت عادية رياضة ألعاب الفيديو زي أي واحد في جيله ما كان شيء شيء ميزة عنه بشكل كان متفوق في المدرسة كان سلوكه جيد في المدرسة يا وسمايل إنت هابي شاي واس ااا lot of energy independence and he loves to help everyone all the time now was bleeding on the pavement time was ticking by his younger brother saw it all <laughs> Everyone uh, knew 
beside me that he was dead. And that he kept, that he arrived to the hospital then. I didn't know. And I told everyone, oh, he's stupid. You don't know. You don't understand. You really, really okay. While Naor's mother was in the hospital, Hassan's father was being led to the morgue. <laughs> Since his death in October, the family has still not received Hassan's body for burial, and they're fearful that their home will now be demolished. In the end, his intended victim, Naor, clinging to life for many days, made it through. I knew that he would be okay. I knew. He's a strong child, I knew. Within hours of his death, posters of Hassan now declared a martyr were being made and displayed. He's no longer just Hassan, he's been transformed into a symbol of the Palestinian struggle, a martyr of Al-Aqsa. His father Khaled attends Friday prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex, just as he used to with his late son. <laughs> This is a land in the grip of paranoia. Will the next attack happen on a bus, a street or a toy shop? In recent months, local television and internet have been awash with gruesome images. The media have tried to call this the third intifada, but the recent lone acts are not mass protests involving stone-throwing kids. It's something altogether more unpredictable and terrifying.